sorry, Jackie. So punchy. <laughs> I'm ready. I like it. No, I like it. OK, so, Jackie, you actually conceived this, uh, this session. You, you, um, you know, I mentioned earlier about the buyers and stuff, leaning in and stuff like that. Jackie's one of them. She's always been a massive supporter of this event, supporter of telly, too. And we had a great conversation. You were like, ah, oh, Justin, the problem. Young people on telly. Can you just explain to me, from your perspective, and also a little bit of your bias as well, of what's going on within your household, yep. what is your position within your organisation and what is your sort of challenge with this sort of young people on television? Um, well, sort of, I'm still laughing because I said to Justin, do you want me to talk as some sort of expert in media investment or do you want me to talk as a mum with three kids? So there's sort of two parts to it. And one is we look at data, that's all I do all day. You know, you talk to measurement, you know, what happened? You know, did that campaign work? You know, what was the response? Did we get the brand uplift that we needed? Did we get the sales? Data informing decisions and then at home I've got a petri dish like my own little qualitative survey group and what's really interesting about that is to be a good trader you don't need you know you've got the data but really I'm predicting into the future so what's happened today isn't the campaign that I'm planning actually in six months I'm actually planning on feeling emotion intuition and that I'm getting from my environment and those people around me. So I've got a 17-year-old son. And for those of you that have been 17-year-old men in the room, you have three passions, sport, music, and friends. That has remained unchanged for the entire time that I've been alive. But it's how they're connecting sport, music, and community that I think is different. So let's talk to him. Whoever decided that the NRL's first match would be in Las Vegas after the Super Bowl with Manly playing the Rabbitohs, and I am a Manly supporter, best, most clever idea ever. It has made the NRL glamorous. It's made it a feeling of connection, and that is what will drive you know, media metrics, brand uplift, that connection with consumers. And I think that's the thing we've got to remember when we're thinking about younger audiences. How are they discovering content? I think that's really interesting. My 10-year-old doesn't know the brands Channel 7, Channel 9, Channel 10. He has been brought up, he's the first generation that's brought up with a screen always on him, and he's been brought up with YouTube as his first point of call. So how do you bring him back into to air linear TV when he doesn't know Channel 7, Channel 9, Channel 10. When I asked him about subscription services, he knows Disney, he knows Stan, and he knows Netflix. But his content, his place of choice, is automatically YouTube. That's where he goes. I said to him, what's your favourite TV ch channel at the moment? He goes, TV, I don't even know what that is. He said, my favourite channel at the moment is surfing with Noz. And I'm like, who the, who the hell is Noz? You know, um, and that is his favourite show at the moment. Um, you know, someone talked to Mr Beast. And I think what we've got to remember is discovery. How are people going to discover your content? Because that's important. And interestingly, content in YouTube is discovering him. So it finds him. It knows what's, what he's watched and what he's going to watch but again. So they're targeting and it will serve him content that they know he's interested in. Interesting point for people trying to serve new content to children. The second point is around influence, the power of the influencer. You heard Mr Beast, you know, Logan. Does everyone know him? A Logan, KSI, launched Prime, drinks. Mm. Did, is there, are there any mothers in the room that literally went to every Easy Mart in the search for Prime? Yeah, okay, put your hands up. Yeah, but, yeah hundreds of people, shocker. Um, the power of influence and then community. How do you connect them? They talk when they're watching TV shows to each other. So it's not a lounge room experience anymore. They're on their phones and they're on WhatsApp chat. You know, even mothers now, MKR, I've got 15 of my friends talking about what that girl's wearing and how we don't like that guy. But that's how we're connecting in the living room now. We're connecting in a much broader way. 
So, they but, so but Jackie, do you, that's your household though, that might be unique to you. Yeah. Do you take that into, into your sort of buying decisions? Yeah, I think you take that and then you're overlaying the data and then you're looking at trends. So for example, Taylor Swift, biggest thing, you know, to hit Sydney in ages. But actually for 15 year old girls, Taylor Swift's not big. SZA, who's coming in a few weeks, is big. I think Taylor Swift was also responsible for having the <coughs> largest viewership for the NFL as well, which was a live, live linear experience. Yeah. Right, Di, over to you for the TV industry. She mentioned, uh, Jackie mentioned a couple of points there. Does it matter if young people don't have a strong brand affinity? And by the way, the demo you're talking there, you're talking, what, 12 to 18 year olds? Yeah. Right? Does that matter, Di, that if they don't have a strong affinity? And how, how are you guys dealing with the, the sort of young person challenge as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, look, the facts are really important in terms of the numbers. So even if you look at younger demographics, you know, in that 18 to 39 demo, there is still 6.3 million people watching Total TV in that age bracket. Um, from a brand point of view, we're in an age where content is so accessible to all audiences, particularly younger audiences, and they really do follow the content. If you can surface really amazing content, market it to the right audience, and they will find the content, and then once they're in your ecosystem, the role that we have as broadcasters and content creators is then to keep them within your ecosystem. Um, so we do have to think differently about the way that we talk to those younger audiences because ultimately they are different. And I think there is a perception versus reality issue here. Um, I was talking to my niece as Jackie was talking to her daughter. She's 15 years old last night. And I said, do you watch TV? She's like, no, I watch Disney. I watch, you know, I watch Netflix. I said, no, do you actually watch TV? What did you watch last night? Oh, I watched Maths with Dad. So again, you know, there's a, there's a perception versus reality. So yeah, um, interesting that my niece is watching <laughs> Maths with her dad. But, um, um, but in saying that, um, I think again, people are watching um, and it's really important to have the numbers behind it um, to make sure that we can make um, decisions around where investment is going. So, okay, slightly unfriendly question, sure. but um, do you think broadcasters, though, have dropped the ball with this demographic? Because um, I know a lot of broadcasters around the world are doing what they can, particularly yep. with their streaming assets, yep. building different content uh, categories, uh, uh, catalogs, sorry. Have we dropped the ball? Can we get them back? Look, I think we can always do more. Um, I think it's really interesting to see um, different strategies that are happening in global markets. Um, one of the examples that I can talk to that we implemented last year, and we're in a fortunate position, we have an ecosystem that includes 10, 10 Play and Paramount Plus, so local and global product. Uh, we took Inspired Unemployed and Batuta Advocate, which are two amazing brands in itself now that was born from social media, um, you know, creating that fandom, um, that cultural connection, and uh, commissioned two shows. And so those shows were strategically commissioned to capture a social media audience and bring them into our ecosystem. Um, and we ran that program, those programs across all of our distribution channels, 10, 10 Play and Paramount Plus, that gave them a different experience in terms of whether they wanted to pay and watch all the episodes or wait weekly um, as a free service. So I think you know, it's really exciting to continue to st experiment uh, with those types of commissions and we're in a fortunate position that we can do so. Okay, Guy, you, you, you struggle with this problem as well because buyers are coming to you and they, they tend to be buying sort of an older demographic from cinema, but you actually have huge audiences that skew younger too. Yeah, so 52% of our audience is sub 40, but only 8% of the campaigns that we run specifically target that demographic. Why is that? Oh, I, think, I think people are just very comfortable in buying big, blunt demographics at the moment and we're trying to shift the conversation away from those big broad demos into more of a high value audience conversation and also an outcome conversation so um, but I also think we we generally get um, there is a comfort in buying digital so the conversation around I use TV for plus 40s and then I use digital slash video for 18 to 39s mm -hmm. is a very nice easy construct to get um, but that also then just it boils it back down to reach and cost. And so where we, f we fill in is really thinking about the position of culture, the group size, why this audience is coming to us in the first place, where you can reach them beyond big blockbusters, 
um, and the outcomes that you can deliver and the impact that you make rather than debasing it back to reaching cost all the time. Yeah. Do you think when, when buyers go, young audience, they go YouTube? Is that like... Yeah, absolutely. I think... That massive... I don't think it's just YouTube. I just think it's digital in general. Yeah. Um, and so we're working with a lot of clients based around having us, uh, us with digital. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there's a role for TV in there somewhere in terms of picking off big programs. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, I think it's... You know, there is a consideration that just digital fits the mold. Yeah. Um, whereas, I think you've heard it all today that there's an awful lot of conversation about, you know, the additive effect of channels. So we're not saying that you need to think about just us. We're saying we play a role with all of this, and having us with those other channels is a better outcome for all. Jackie, is that what young people are? Not young people. Is that what buyers are thinking? They're coming to you and going, "Well, we've got to be on these platforms." Like, do you? Do you? Do you is this a fight within your organisation? And what do you need from? television to perhaps help you with that? Um, or is it just the reality of the situation? No, I, I don't think it's a fight. I think, um, I think as a trader planning to younger demos, you're looking really for kind of, you know, they use a lot of media, to be honest. Like, they are continually surrounded by a screen. They, they, the screen never leaves their side. That's different from how it was even 10 years ago. Um, and I think the way that we're connecting the, the combination is, is what's important. The t you know, different touch points. We talk to cinema. Cinema is a community experience, cultural experience uh, for this particular audience. It you know, has, has a strong place. Um, you know, fast channels coming out, certain content, um, really important. If I'm buying kids 5 to 12 at the moment, I don't know, Coco Melon's super important to my schedule. Um, you know, Paw Patrol's still an outstanding choice. <laughs> you know, um, you know, our, you know, one of the brands that I've worked on for a long time. They've been a, a, a great brand um, within IPG Media Brands is Lego. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate to work on that brand. Um, you know, and the way that they have created their own fast channel um, with their own content um, is, is a fascinating way that they, um, you know, have expanded into talking to the, the consumer that they want. So you're, you're very excited about all these new sort of distribution opportunities and all the rest of it. So big criticism that, that broadcasters have had, and a guy obviously can comment on this too, is that um, TV companies haven't actually worked very well with the digital platforms in order to grow reach, right? And a really good example of that is, um, is Disney. One of the biggest uh, commented brands is um, ESPN on TikTok, right? They produce a lot of content for it. So should the TV industry and cinema industry work better with we all, we're always so confrontational with the YouTubes and the rest of it. Should you work better with digital in order to put your content on the platforms where these uh, people, where these, this demo is? We've kind of got, I suppose, in our industry, that content's already there from a streaming perspective. So you could argue, in one sense, that they're just taking our reruns in cinema. Mm -hmm. um, but we are very complementary. If you if you think about the role that we play on comms plans, we are extremely complementary to both TV and digital. And it's the role that we play and the outcome that we deliver, not just what the reach and the cost is. Right. Um, and that's really what we probably should all be talking about better, is how do we drive better outcomes uh, and having a more value-based conversation rather than a cost conversation. Di, working with, the, working with the digital platforms, do you think broadcasters should do it better? Look, I think the broadcasters have invested a lot into their streaming platforms. It's been a big part of the transformation of our industry. We can always do better, but I think the really exciting thing about now as we look into the future is that, you know, to Guy's point, you know, look beyond reach, you know, focus on the audience. Where are they? Make sure that we've got creativity at the core of everything that we do. And particularly when you start to move into the CTV space, you're in a world where you can now look at personalization at scale through dynamic creative optimization, interactive ads, immersive experiences. This has never been able to be done on that big screen before in, in that CTV environment. So if you think about holistically TV coming together, you can integrate in properties, um, align with cultural moments, you know, ad placement to make sure you're reaching the right audience, and then making sure when you have them, being able to immerse themselves into a premium ad experience informed by data, and then measuring those outcomes is actually what's going to be really exciting about how the ecosystem comes together and not looking at linear in isolation and then digital in isolation as well. It's very, very complementary. 
Um, and I think you know that's the exciting part of our future. But but w you also need those younger audiences. 100%. That's what we're talking about, rather. Yeah, 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 There's yeah, no course. point having a good choppable ad if they're not watching it, right? But they are watching it. Right? No, they are. That's true. Yeah. But but yeah. okay, I agree with you that the the, yeah. the ad formats and stuff like that do yeah. need to change. Yeah. Um, but what about like, because I'm noticing it in a lot of other markets sure. where, where TV is partnering a bit better with the YouTubes yep. and all the rest of it and stuff yep. like that. Do you, are you guys doing any of that? Um, do you put your content on there? Do you sell ads against it? Yeah, I mean, we um, have distributed content on YouTube. Um, you know, Does it work for you? Do you make money out of it? Look, um, there's definitely you know, more that we can do. Globally, we do a lot of that in terms of you know, partnering with um, you know, off-network. We've, we've you know, definitely had um, partnerships in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and it is very complimentary because we know that you know, when t people talk about shows on social, um, they talk about our shows. Yeah. You, know, you look at TikTok, last year we had a billion, um, you know, uh, billion views on TikTok related to MasterChef. Yeah. Um, so I think as long as it's very complimentary, absolutely, we should be open to the entire ecosystem and how that works together. Okay, Jackie, what about effectiveness, right? It's obvious that, we're, that TV has got obviously a younger demo issue. There's, there's nothing hidden about that. But what about effectiveness? Like, Peter Field makes a really good argument that, um, yes, there's fewer eyeballs there, but it's such an effective medium that taking all of your money out of it, even though you're hitting less of that demo than you used to, is a really bad move. Do you ever, do you ever consider that? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think what you're looking for within the linear audience is there are still pockets of greatness for younger audiences. Um, Love Island is a cracker um, for this audience. You know, the way it drops, the way that it's marketed, you know, really cracking piece of content that gives reach, gives connection, gives community, gives influence all at the same time. And that's why that piece of content is so effective. Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, it does. But what I'm suggesting is that social environments, these other environments that they're on, is less effective than television. Like, would you agree with that? Um, it's hard to know. The connection that um, the kids have with, tic with, with TikTok, for example, the way they use it as a communication device, they, they're not just there for the content, is yeah. interesting. So I think they say, you say the content isn't interesting on TikTok, but then there's an argument to say, what is effectiveness really? Because if, if quality is in the eyes of the person watching, I think that's quality. That's why I'm watching it. If, if you change what quality actually means, I think we've got a really interesting kind of how do you drive effectiveness with short form? How do you drive effectiveness with, you know, in the likes of TikTok? How do you reformat what we know as traditional linear content in a TikTok kind of environment? Mm -hmm. I, I think they're kind of the challenges that we should put to the, to the room to be sort of thinking about and solving for. Okay, and then Guy, on the final word on this, how do we connect? Like we always say, we've got to connect with this audience in a, in a more meaningful way. What does that actually mean? Like, like do, do advertisers need to connect or do they, they just need their message uh, received? Oh, I think you need, you need to get the message out there and you certainly need to connect and make, it, make impact with the audience. So we think about it in a couple of ways. Spot, there's obviously spots and dots and screens and the attention benefits that we deliver. But increasingly, it's about experience. It's about being part of a cultural conversation. Um, and it's about taking uh, cinema out of the traditional spaces and putting them in unique spaces. So we built a, um, in partnership with Moving Bed, we built a, an outdoor cinema in Barangaroo for the last six, seven weeks. And it's been sold out at 96, 97%. So people are craving those types of experiences. And that's where you get a deeper connection beyond just spots and dots and screens. And you're very particular about your creative as well. Very, uh, um, you, you uh, monitor it and you only have certain amount, like you, you can't just put any old ad in those environments, can you? Oh yeah, it depends on the commercial outcome <laughs> we're trying to drive. Yeah, <laughs> all right, At okay. that point in time. Depends um, on the client then. <laughs> depends on how much they're paying. But I think we are very, very conscious of the <laughs> yeah. viewing experience. So we talk a lot, you know, long-term future for us is less ads, better outcomes. Right. And that is a well-trodden path, but you know, we are looking for the right types of advertisers on the platform because our audience responds to that. Fewer ads, get paid more, better outcomes. If I can get for paid everyone. more, that'd be brilliant, yeah. Okay, well that wraps up the Young People panel. Um, ladies and gentlemen, join me in thanking my panelists there. Thank you very much, thank you. Right, to, to wrap up the session before the break, I'm gonna invite Paul McIntyre back on stage to talk about the linear business here in Australia. Where is Paul? He's at the back there. Okay, as he comes up on stage, let's give him and his panelists a massive welcoming round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go.